In order to be uh, an effective researcher and be a high enrolling site, you have to have the patience. And so it's you know mandatory to have a busy medical practice to draw from and good referral sources to draw from. Um, but if you do research part time, you're never going to be a successful researcher. It is a difficult task and it really involves the physician uh, be really uh, committed to it. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Andrew Pucker. I'm the Senior Director of Clinical Medical Sciences at Lexitas Pharma Services, and I'd like to welcome you back to the In Focus podcast series. Today I have with us Dr. Bruce Siegel, one of our experts. Uh, Dr. Siegel, could you please introduce yourself and tell us just a little bit about yourself and where you practice? Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Bruce Siegel. I'm an ophthalmologist. I practice in uh, Delray Beach, Florida. I've been there for over 30 years and I have a, a busy medical practice. I'm a solo practitioner and right next door is my research center. I have a dedicated research center and we uh, uh, run trials from all over the world. I've done 40 trials as principal investigator and many with Lexitas. That's great. One of the things I'm trying to introduce or do with my job is get more people into research. So how did you do it? How, how can our listeners who are interested in getting the research do what you've done? Well, it's very hard to break into research because the sponsors don't want a research naive physician. Uh, a, phys a physician may be an expert in treating patients, but research is a, a different skill set. It's certainly a related skill set, but it's different. So getting your first study is difficult. And my first study was uh, an Allegan Durista study. It was a difficult to enroll study. They were under enrolling and I had a big glaucoma practice and I was just lucky that I got my first study and it turned out I was one of the top enrollers in the study and that, that built it, built it uh, the research practice up and, and now we, we do a lot of research. Um, but getting your first study is the hardest part. And I'm a site management organization. I'm trying to get a lot of research naive doctors in every specialty, uh, their first study. And it's, it's a challenge. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you for doing that. It's good to get people in the door. You know, you can prove yourself a little bit as a sub I, and then you can start running like you have. So you mentioned that you're a high rolling site. We, we love your site. We know that you can bring in the subjects. How did you do that? Well, in order to be uh, an effective researcher and be a high enrolling site, you have to have the patience. And so it's, you know, mandatory to have a busy medical practice to draw from and good referral sources to draw from. Um, but if you do research part time, you're never going to be a successful researcher. It is a difficult task and it really involves the physician uh, be really uh, committed to it and fully engaged and absolutely involved. You know, I hear some researchers, they, the, the, the physician shows up, signs the page and walks out. Well, that, that's not how to do it. That's how to have a little side hobby, but to make it to be a dominant part of your practice, you have to be completely committed to research. And in my case, I have a dedicated office with full-time uh, staff and uh, several research coordinators. Uh, so I've made the commitment to it. I'm a very involved uh, PI, I'm involved in every aspect of it, including getting the studies in the first place, budget negotiation, assigning tasks to the different uh, coordinators and teams, uh, and making sure that every single patient that's a candidate uh, has a full informed consent discussion to try to get them to enroll and to keep them happy. You have to, it's like an MD VIP. They get your cell phone anything they need. You try to make them super happy. They don't wait. Uh, and they're all VIPs. You treat them special and they love doing it and they want to do the next study. But I think the, the number one thing to be a high enroller is to be completely committed to your research practice. It can't be a side gig. It has to be a dominant thing that you're, you know, completely committed to or you just won't be successful. Great, great advice. One last follow-up related to what we were just talking about. What made you start your own research practice? So you said you have your own private practice, so you see patients, and then you also have the side business. Like what was the kind of the spur to make this this dedicated thing? Well, once I got my second study and uh, my very first study, you know, each chart was a thousand pages. So pretty soon I needed more space than the room that I dedicated. 
And I realized if I was going to do this and getting more studies, I needed an entire office and I needed more than one technician doing it on the side. And I, and I built it up. And now we have, you know, a lot of square footage dedicated to that. And uh, it built up. And now we're actually taking on an additional office for it. So we're expanding and uh, it's very exciting. And it's a great complement to the medical practice. I, I love treating patients. You know, as a regular doctor, you treat one patient at a time, which is what every doctor loves to do. With all the challenges in medicine, the one thing we still love to do is sit, a, sit in front of a patient and bond with them, figure out their problems, solve their problem and improve the quality of life and make them happy and they refer you more patients. But when you do a research study and you get a product FDA approved, you can help a million patients. So we've gotten in the last year and a half, I think six uh, products FDA approved as well over a million patients a year. And so I like helping the world in a, in a population basis. So um, it's very gratifying to, to treat people one at a time and to treat the entire population. That's wonderful. So it's not easy, but you can definitely do it. And I'm sure it's really rewarding, as you just said, and it probably adds a whole another dimension, dimension to your practice. So it just makes your job more interesting, right? It, it definitely does. And, it, and being a researcher as a private practitioner, it's symbiotic. The two, you know, definitely build on each other and feed off each other. I don't think either one could be uh, standalone. I think you really need to have both to do it properly. And, and it's very satisfying and it's very challenging. I mean, in, in medicine, after doing it as long as I've do, been doing it, I, I really have seen everything a million times. I mean, how many dry eye patients or glaucoma patients have I seen after 33 years in private practice? But every single research project has its own challenges. It's got a 150 page protocol you have to memorize. And, you know, it's a whole different skill set. It's stimulating. And I'm often on the call with sponsors as, as, uh, as a consultant. And, you know, we're solving problems. We're, I'm acting like a scientist. It's great. It's not just the same old clinical problem over and over, which is also satisfying. Things are all satisfying. Every patient is a human being. And that's stimulating getting to know the people that are in front of me. They're not just a, a dry eye case. They're a human being suffering with dry eye. And that's, you know, we get into their whole life and how, what that means to them. But, but research is extremely challenging and it's really a mental stimulation and I enjoy it. Well, I'd like to thank Dr. Siegel for being with us here today. And I also like to thank you, the listeners of the InFocus podcast for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you.